To perform a lighting analysis in Revit, you will need a floor plan, either a room or a building that you plan on analyzing for lighting. In this case, we've used an existing building and we're actually going to use a building alongside it as a proposed building as well. So you will need to have rooms placed within these, room tags or space tags placed within these as well. Then within your analyze tab, just go to your lighting tab. Give that a second to load up. This will pull you up a dialog box. In the settings, there are some default settings. I usually leave these just as our default, but you've got a couple of different settings you can run through uh, to change here if you wish, and also to create a CSV points results file if you wish. To run a new analysis, simply just select run new analysis. I'm just gonna hit go on this. That's gonna process in the cloud now. It's gonna ask me, have we got the correct project location set up? In this case we do and we're just going with the default one but you may have your own city or wherever the particular project is being created uh, based on your project location under your management tab. That's then going to pull up another dialog box and you can perform a series of different tests. So you can perform an illuminance test which is just going to test the inside the amount of daylight access to a room, uh, the daylight factor which gives you a percentage of daylight factor over the number of sunlight hours across a whole year or annually. Daylight autonomy, so how autonomous is a room to light itself just from windows without any lighting and then there are a number of industry standards such as the LEED 2009 and then there's LEED version 4 as well and you can also measure solar access to a particular internal space as well. So for this one we're just going to leave it at a luminance analysis and the location is Boston, Massachusetts, but again, this could be any particular location where your project is. And the date and time is as defined in the view if you wish, or you can change the particular date and time. So Perez All Weather Sky is a fairly industry standard uh, sky model to be checking. Or you have your CIE Intermediary, CIE Clear Sky, Uniform or Daylight Factor as well. So in this case, we're going to check the date and time, 21st of March going up to 21st of March at 3 p.m. So it's going to check the illuminance analysis across those times. So it's going to hit apply and start analysis. That will take a few moments to process in the cloud and then you'll receive a notification to say that your model has been produced and the analysis is complete. Now, when you run an analysis at first, it automatically creates one of your 3D views as insight lighting model view. And this is where you'll always view your results between your different results. So for example, if we look at previous analysis that we've run in this, so that particular one is complete. If we go back to lighting and to view the particular analysis that you wish to display either to a client or, or uh, investigate yourself, you just drop down where they've been ran. So here's the particular one we've just produced, but these are other ones that I've ran previous. So I want to look at an illuminous analysis that was run on the third of the ninth. So it's gonna hit go on that. And what it's gonna do, it's going to pull up uh, a little dialog box and tell me if it's above or below the certain thresholds that we've set. So in this case, we've set different types of lighting thresholds uh, or and the sky thresholds as well. And within this 3D view, I can accept that as well. It tells me because it uses cloud credits. So within this particular 3D view, you can see if I select this particular element, it is in fact offset from the ground and that is required for certain uh, compliance with lighting analysis that there's a certain distance from the ground and in this case I believe it's been 33 inches uh, some some cases it can be changed to 12 inches but that will require on, on the particular standard that you're setting it to so the maximum looks that we've taken in this particular analysis is to 6,000 looks and the lowest is 143 and we can actually see that in the gradient map so if we go into our floor plan up here under our floor plans this was automatically produced we can see here that the lighting impact within our two different buildings. So we've got our existing building at the top, it's all completely blue. We've got an existing proposed building below our existing building and we can see the daylight is actually flooding in and we can just check that against the graph. Now we can in fact change the appearance of this graph, just go into edit styles and select a different type of style that you wish to view in your view. So I'm just gonna select uh, daylight factor style by points. That's just gonna load up and take a moment. And we can see if I zoom in and just change the scale of points on this, for example, change it to one to 10. 
that will just take a second to load up and you can see all the different points if you wish to output that file but i can in fact change that back as well so i'm just going to select this again edit style change it back to the gradient so just lighting analysis default there are a number of, of different options in here as well i can then also go into my 3d view turn on my section box for example so if you make a change to your building, you need to rerun the lighting analysis. So for example, if you wish to show this to a client, and then maybe you want to divide up the different rooms, if I go in and divide up the rooms, placing walls, so choosing an external wall, interior, interior partition, so all I'm going to do is just place a wall in here. These results will not update until I place a room tag in here. And then in fact go to my analyze tab go back to lighting and then you will need to rerun the test as you have updated the design model by placing this new wall so what the lighting analysis also produces is a schedule of the lighting so if i go into my room schedule it will actually give me the different rooms that we have tested within our threshold and this is an output table that perhaps you could provide to a client or if it's for a certain type of check uh, that you want to provide to a organization as well so a very handy way to use the lighting analysis is to check the impact of a proposed building on an existing building so if i in fact check my lighting analysis as well i know that this one is my existing analysis so that's okay i was going to click no on that if i go back into my floor plan it jumps back to the relevant uh, phase that this was actually produced on so this pr particular uh, lighting analysis here that I can see this was actually produced before the building was proposed here so on a different phase and the lighting analysis recalls that as well so if I jump back into here just make sure that I'm set on the correct phase and I can see that before the building is created or before it's proposed for here there's a flood of light coming in here so again if I just jump back it automatically brings you back to the 3d view if I then want to go back and see what the proposed impact is, click no on that. Just take a second to load up. And then I can see the impact immediately visually on this. The, the yellow has completely dropped and the green has completely disappeared as well. And it's all blue, so we've got a, a lot of darkness coming in here. So maybe you need to then supplement that with either internal artificial lighting or some sort of roof windows as well.